Welcome to Dr. Daya Wilke Jewel's online service. If it's your first time here, we are glad that you join us for this experience. Well, if it's your first time, you won't probably know that on our Facebook, there's a link where the kids can have their online ministry experience while you watch the service. There's two ways for you by giving, EFT or Zapper. Watch the screen.
Today's scripture reading is Matthew 28 verse 1. Now after the Sabbath, near dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And a great earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone from the opening of the tomb and sat on it. The angel appearing was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guard shook, paralyzed with fear, at the sight of him, and became like dead men, pale and immobile. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said he would. Come, see the place where he was lying. Then go quickly and tell his disciple that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee, as he promised. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So the woman left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell the good news to the disciples. I'm sure you have seen those uh, before and after pictures. I love some of them are, are really, really funny. Check out this one. So I hope that we won't end up like that after the lockdown. But the story that we heard about in the scripture reading this morning is about these two women. They got up very early on the Sunday morning and uh, they made their way to the tomb. And uh, on their way there, they remembered something. One of the gospels actually say that they turn to one another and they ask one another, who will roll away the stone for us? Because you see, what, what happened was that the, the religious leaders were afraid that the disciples will come and steal the body of Jesus. And so they, they rolled this huge stone in front of the grave and they sealed it off. The women didn't know this. I'm sure they wouldn't have gone in the first place if they knew. But this is what happened. And, and, and here is what I want you to see is that the stone represents no entrance. It's the before picture. They would have reached the grave and they, they would have seen that we, we, we cannot go in. Behind the stone lies the Son of God, but you are not allowed into this space. In a way, it's referencing back to the temple and the veil in the temple that's saying that you know, you cannot come into the Holy of Holies. You cannot enter into God's holy presence. Stay away. Keep out. It's communicating distance. The second thing that uh, the stone was saying, was shouting out, uh, is that there's no hope. You know, the stone was a source of great sadness, a symbol of hopelessness. You, you will never see him again. You will never speak to him again. To him again you will never touch him again but it was still very early on that sunday morning as the sun rose and a new day dawned it also it was also the start of a new week and what they didn't realize it was the beginning of a whole new era and so when they reached the tomb they saw the stone and, and it was actually rolled away and, and there's this angel and he's, he's sitting on the, on the stone uh, speaking to the woman and, and it's as if there's a declaration he's making from this stone. The stone becomes a monument. You see, the stone wasn't rolled away so that Jesus can walk out of, of the, the tomb. No, he, we know that he could walk through walls. Uh, nothing would have stopped him. The stone would not have stopped him. The stone was rolled away so that everybody can see that the grave is empty. He is risen. He is not here. And so the stone becomes this monument 
of declaration. And here's what it declares. It declares you and my inclusion in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 17 says, And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless. And you are, are still under condemnation for your sins. Verse 20 says, But the fact is that Christ has been raised from the dead. He has become the first of a great harvest of those who will be raised to life again. That sign at the entrance that said no entrance has been replaced with a sign that says all are welcome. It's proclaiming our inclusion in Christ. The second thing it's proclaiming is the promises of God are true. Listen to this, Matthew 28, 6. He isn't here, the angel says. He has been raised from the dead. Just as he said. So many times when Jesus spoke about what was to come, he told his disciples that, you know, he would die, but that he would be raised again, that he would rise up on the third day. That was the promise. And, and here the promise is fulfilled. And it's saying to us, listen, all the promises of God throughout the entire Bible, the promises God made to you, he will fulfill them. They will come true. This is the reality of this day. This is what the stone is shouting out. The next thing that we see is uh, the after picture of the stone. The stone remains a tombstone. But it's not the tombstone of Jesus because no, he, he has risen. He's alive. The stone has become the tombstone of fear. Fear is dead. The very first thing the angel says to, to this woman is that don't be afraid. Don't fear. There's no more space for fear. You see, for those that are searching for the crucified Christ, they will not fear because they will find a risen Messiah. Hebrews 2 verse 15. Only in this way could he deliver those who have lived all their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. That moment Jesus removed that fear, and we are no longer slaves to fear. It also became the tombstone of sin and failure and rejection and everything that you can think of that had the ability to separate you from God. All of that now no longer has space in your life anymore. Cannot separate you from the love of God anymore. And so Easter is the story of change. It's the story of new things, new beginnings. It's the story of before and after. And so I, I'm sure there's stones in your life that represents your your past, it represents your before picture. Stones of fear, stones of, of failure, stones of rejection. Uh, and, and all of these stones shouting out to you, saying to you, this, you know, you're not good enough. There's no space for you in God's kingdom. You will not make it. You won't get through this. It's going to get to you. That's what these, these stones are shouting out. It's trying to convince you, you'll never make it. But listen, ignore them. They are lying to you. They're not speaking the truth. Because the truth is, what Jesus said on, on that Friday when he was hanging on the cross, here's the truth. He said, it is finished. Man, what he's saying is that we have transitioned from the before picture to the after picture. What he's saying is that you are included in this after picture. And the after picture is a beautiful picture. It's a, a picture of inclusion. It's a, a picture of, of God's healing in your life, of His restoration. It's a picture of God saying that I have a plan for your future, that you have purpose. It's a picture where He's saying, you know, that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. It's a picture that says that through any situation, 
through every difficult situation that we have to go through, that God will have a purpose through that and through our lives. And, that, and as we walk into our future, He's there. And so this is our after picture. This is what we are celebrating on, on uh, Easter Sunday. This is the beauty of the story that we are sharing with one another on this day. And so I'm asking you and your family that as you gather today, as you go through this Sunday, that you will share this beautiful story with one another, that, that you will celebrate. This is not a day of mourning. This is the best day we have in our whole calendar all year long. Uh, Friday wouldn't have made sense without Easter Sunday. But because of Sunday, we are celebrating Friday. Friday becomes a good Friday. It's that moment Jesus is declaring and is finished. It's that moment of our victory. But it's because of this Sunday that Jesus is risen. And I know that he's risen in your heart. He's risen in your circumstances. He's alive in you. And He wants to breathe into your space, into your heart, into your thinking, the newness that came with this new picture. And so I'm inviting you into this celebration moment. May God bless you. Shout your praise, 
our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. our service and we really hope you enjoyed this time with us so with regards to next week's service please watch facebook your emails and whatsapp for further communication please don't lock off and stay and chat with us a little bit longer for what was happening in your house in the last three weeks god bless